after two winters in a row where we've lost power for an extended period, a lot of people are interested in generators now. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the setup I've got on my house because it's very low cost, but it's very effective. So we're out here at my circuit breaker panel. Now, it's a very standard circuit breaker panel. Uh, the major exception is that everything's actually labeled. Other than that though, the big difference is what's going on right here. This is called a manual interlock for a generator. What it does is it allows you to feed power directly in through a circuit breaker, but it prevents that power from going back to the power grid. The way it works is that you cannot turn this breaker on until this breaker is off and vice versa. The reason for that is that if the power is out and you're running your generator and you don't disconnect your house from the, the grid, well, two blocks away there might be a line man up on a pole in the freezing rain and he's trying to hook the power back up and he thinks that this neighborhood is totally blacked out. Except that if you're running a generator and you're feeding power through here to the grid, you are actually going to kill him. So that's not a very nice thing to do to somebody who's just trying to get your lights back on. So this interlock is about a hundred bucks, but it'll save a life and you gotta have it. So let's talk about what's going on here and we're gonna actually pretend that there is a power outage. So power's off, uh oh. Let me come out here and turn on my generator. Step one, shut off the main breaker. All right, my entire house has no power now. Next thing, because I've got a, a 120 volt generator, I'm going to shut off all of my 220 volt appliances, anything that's got a double breaker like this. So, air conditioning, and then there's a few down at the bottom. There we go. That's all off. Not a big deal, I don't use most of that. I'm also going to shut off anything that has a heavy load. Uh, the microwave I'll leave on. It does draw a lot of power, but it's not in use. The refrigerator draws a lot of power, so shut that off for the moment. And the furnace. It's a gas furnace, but it has an electric blower, so I'm shutting that off. Anything with a heating element or a motor that will draw a lot of power. Uh, there's the dishwasher. I could shut that off. Not that I'm using it. So, now I'm ready to turn on the generator. So, I can now slide this panel up. See? And now that it's slid up, I can turn the generator breaker on. Now the panel stays up, and it's impossible for me to turn grid power back on. So, this generator breaker is 50 amps, and it feeds down through the panel, through this flex conduit, to this box here. This is a generator inlet box. Not a lot going on in here, just a big weather shielded connector. And here's the matching plug. So this goes in like so. Very hard to do one handed. Shove it in, twist it, and it's set. Now, looking at the wiring here, this is not what you're supposed to use. I used what I had lying around, which is 50 amp rated stranded cable. Normally this is run inside conduit. I need to replace with this with the right stuff, but honestly, it's good enough as long as you don't do something stupid like drive over it with a car. Uh, you'll also notice that I have three wires here. Green is your ground, white is your neutral, and red is the hot. Now, if you know anything about uh, AC power, you know that there's actually two different 120 volt legs to a house, but I only have a 120 volt generator, so I can only energize one leg, except that inside this plug, I'm taking this hot and I'm taking it from one leg to the other. So both legs um, will be energized with 120 volts. That's also why I turned off the 220. I'm not generating any power to my 220 devices. It doesn't harm them, but there's no real point in leaving them on. They will not function with the way this is set up. This is perfectly safe only because this cord only works with my 120 volt generator. It, you could not use this in its current configuration with a 240 volt generator. So with that done, let's fire up the generator.
This is a Westinghouse iGen 4500. They make a few versions of these. Uh, they even make one that runs off of dual fuel, gasoline, or propane. I've got the basic model. So let's start it up. Step one, turn on the fuel. Next, turn the power on. Finally, start it. Alright, we're running. Uh, no load. And full fuel, full tank of gas. I know that's hard to read. It's saying 21 hours of runtime. That's going to go down once I plug it in. So this right here, this is a 30 amp outlet. And I'm going to plug the other end of the cord into there. Generators ramping up. We're now showing uh, 15 hours of runtime down to 13 and at about 50% load. Let's go back over to the panel. All right, so check on things. It's time to return the fridge back on. Turn on the furnace so we can have some heat. And finally the dishwasher. All the 240 volt stuff stays off. I could turn it on. It wouldn't hurt anything, but it's not necessary because it's not going to function. Close the rain cover on this thing. and close that back up and now I'm ready to run off the generator for as long as I need to. We're back inside now. I can see the generator out of one of my windows which is very nice. I can keep an eye on the fuel level and the load from here. I can tell that I'm at 25% load and I of course have a full tank of gas. So let's go check out the rest of the house. She's happy. And you can see I've got all the lights on. I'm actually turning on pretty much every light in the house because they're all LED bulbs. They don't really draw anything. Fridge is running normally. Stove and microwave are good. I've even got the dishwasher now. Anything that has a heating element is going to suck a lot of power. So, for instance, I would not try to run that coffee maker right there while I'm also running the dishwasher or the microwave. The microwave is another big power draw. The next thing up on power draws is anything with an electric motor. So, the biggest one for me in a winter storm is going to be the furnace. Obviously, I want that running. So, that would get priority, and then if I want to make a pot of coffee, I might just uh, wait until nobody's using a hair dryer. Uh, I might not use the microwave unless the furnace is off, so on and so forth. Uh, that little generator makes very clean power. Um, it's clean enough that you can actually run your electronics off of it. If you have a more basic job site generator, I would not recommend that. They make what's called dirty power. Um, it's uh, normal AC power is a smooth waveform, but the power that comes off of uh, one of those job site generators is kind of choppy, and it's really not good for your electronics. So, if you have one of those, just, you know, leave your computers and stuff off. Don't try to use them. At this point, we're going to pretend the power outage is over, and uh, it's time to go back onto grid power. So I'm back out at the breaker panel. I know I've got grid power again because my meter is showing stuff. So this is real simple. I'm just going to turn this breaker back off. And when I do that, this lockout plate is going to drop down. There we go. And now I can turn the power back on. Done. 
I'll turn back, I'll turn on all my 240 volt appliances again. Notice that I cannot activate this one, it's been blocked. All right, we're back in business. So we head back to the generator. Now, normally what I do is I actually turn the fuel off and I run it till it dies. That helps the generator last longer. Uh, you don't have a carburetor full of old fuel that can go bad and plug it up. Unplug that. I'll leave the generator to run until it dies, but meanwhile I can pick everything else up. I'll take my cable, coil it back up. And by the way, this is totally safe to touch right now because that breaker has been shut off. That's the other reason for the lockout. It prevents you from hurting you. If I was able to leave that breaker on, I could zap myself quite easily here. All right, so unplug this. It's just a twist and a pull. Close that box up until I need it again. Once that generator runs out of gas, I will bring it inside and yeah, we'll be ready for the next time. Well, I hope this was some useful information for you all. I appreciate you watching. Thanks very much.